Many people has tried to tell the Lenny Cook story. They say how he was better than Amari Stoudemire, he was rated higher than Carmelo Anthony, they place his picture next to LeBron's and say he was rated higher or better than LeBron James for clicks and views. But truth is, Lenny was never better than LeBron James. He was never better than any of those guys. And although I'm here to give you three reasons why he didn't make the NBA, how about an appetizer? Lenny wasn't better than any of those guys because he never put in the work those guys had. He was lazy, immature, and expected the future to be there waiting for him to come and get it. He wasn't focused like those guys were. You know, looking back, I realize how important those words your mom would always say to you were. Attitude will determine your altitude. Humility will drive your ability. Lenny had all those people around him trying to teach him the right ways to do things, but also had the people on his other shoulder telling him how great he was. And remember this face, this guy's gonna be rich. The allure of being a star was too bright. And when that's all you focus on, the work you need to put in now seems obsolete. Leonard Cook, born April 29th, 1982. I want to give a huge shout out to my guy H. Thurman on Instagram for this request. I also want to say thank you guys so much. We finally reached 10K and salute to everyone else that's been asking for this story. I really struggle with doing this and so much people has covered it. But here we go, man. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Let's get it. Lenny is an Atlantic City, New Jersey native, a natural physical specimen that was always bigger than everyone his age. By his junior year in high school, he was averaging 25 points, 10 rebounds, 2 steals, and 2 blocks a game, and the MVP of a major camp at the time called the ABCD camp, a place where all the college coaches were and a few NBA scouts to watch the next great talent. To be the MVP of that was one of the few highlights of Lenny's short career. Also by this time, he was the man in the basketball world and in his circle, one that featured many friends of his that thought he was going to be the next big thing in their own free ride. Those same friends are nowhere to be found in 2019. But let's go back, back to the good times. Stunt number one, what if? My favorite what if quote of all time goes like this. If if was a fifth, you know the rest. It might be the most popular word in the English language, so let's make use of it. If only Lenny Cook had a different head on his shoulders, we'll begin there. In the summer before his senior season, Cook returned to the aforementioned ABCD camp where he'd won the MVP a year before and established himself as the number one player in the country. The difference this time was, they now had another kid that was just as gifted physically, had just as much buzz, or about to anyways, but a lot more polished mentally. A student of the game, the right mindset, and as focused as they came, LeBron James. A junior rated two spots down from Lenny, from Ohio, with a nappy fro and determined to show everyone he was meant to be number one. In their lone matchup, Lenny started off great. It was the key matchup of the camp and everyone was watching. Right out the gate, Lenny scored on LeBron with a move that included 28.9 dribbles, pull up, wet. Next time down, again, 16.5 dribbles, spin move, wet. Cook was feeling himself as he shouted to the crowd and would go on to have a solid game, but that wasn't the story. LeBron completely took over the matchup from there and was showing an array of moves, pull-ups, threes, slashing for dunks, splitting defenses, until the final play, James down one, with six seconds to go. Lenny tries to run from him, nope, too late. His teammate Kyle Kuzma's him onto LeBron. D up Lenny! Crowd on their feet as LeBron makes his move right. In two seconds, he gains the edge on Lenny, blows by him and pull up for a lean and fadeaway push shot. Cash! The crowd erupts, everyone knowing what had just taken place. He was supposed to be LeBron Sr. That game, and mainly that shot, took so much from Cook. What if? What if it didn't go in? What if Lenny's teammate had just made his free throws? What if Lenny had better defense? If if was a fifth, we'd all be lit. That game embarrassed Cook. He was supposed to show scouts he was the number one player and next phenom. 
Instead, it exposed Lenny as a guy that couldn't dribble, pass, wasn't better than LeBron, and really wasn't that good of an all-around basketball player when he's not shooting it every time or bigger than everyone in the gym. If Lenny got the best of that matchup and played a more solid, more team, less out of control game, he'd be in the NBA. Stunt number two, Red Storm. Another huge reason Lenny Cook never even had a shot at the NBA was the fact that he never went to college. Cook was the prototypical guy that you would think needed a year or two in college. I mean, all signs were pointing to it. During his senior year in high school, Cook would turn 19 years old, which in New Jersey meant he was too old to play high school basketball anymore and had to sit out the rest of his senior season, amounting to almost a full year of misorganized play. But JC, why was he 19 still in high school anyway? Well, remember when I said the guy was in focus? This is one of those areas, academically. Lenny didn't give a shit about anything if it didn't involve the NBA. If you watch his documentary and read about his story, you would see how much this guy talked about the NBA and had a wait till I'm rich attitude. He never listened to the guy in his ear telling him how Michael Jordan never missed a workout, practices, or was late for any camp activity. He didn't want to hear how hard Kobe worked as a high school senior on and off the floor. He thought he was already better than those guys. In fact, he even had the audacity to challenge Kobe to a one-on-one, -on -one in which Kobe played his ass as smooth as I've ever seen anyone played. Lenny had offers from everyone as a senior, even though he didn't play for most of the year. Cook was now caught up in the most interesting whirlwind you'll ever see. He'd just seen Kwame Brown go number one from high school in one of the most high school packed classes of all time, and pretty much all of those guys ended up flaming out. So the following year, NBA teams were shook of taking any of these guys, but on the advice of the vulture sports agents, who in hindsight looked like absolute sleazebags and capitalists, convinced Lenny with a bag full of cash that he should enter his name in the draft and take his talents to the league. As we all know, in 2002, Lenny went undrafted in both rounds. Teams just didn't think he was that good, and not seeing him in over a year now, they weren't sold. On top of that, word was that Lenny was more interested in staying out all hours of the night and finding girls than working on his future. A heartbreak for Cook, man, but he should have went to school and proved himself worthy after sitting out so long. Instead, he wanted the glitz and glamour too bad and things came crumbling down. Stunt number three, when it all falls down. After the draft and going undrafted, Lenny still attended the draft party with all the guys that were taken. I don't know how I'd be able to even show my face after that, but that was Lenny, always wanting to attend a good party and a chance to be seen as one of the guys. In May 2003, a year later, he was signed by the USBL's Brooklyn Kings. In 15 games, he averaged 28.8 points and more than 9 rebounds a game. The Celtics gave him a chance, but he would never make the roster. Things weren't looking too bright for Lenny at this point, and it's sad, man, because this guy had a young girlfriend and a son to take care of, along with his family and freeloading friends that left him when he was now fat and sad. It sucks he didn't even get a shot at the league. Humility. If you don't learn it, it will learn you. In the 2004-2005 basketball season, he returned to the PBA, but tore his Achilles tendon, ending his season. In 2006-07, Cook played for the CBA again, where he blew out his other Achilles tendon, ending his career. He's currently a basketball coach that is still right where he started. Only difference, those friends that were all up in the videos wiping his tears as he announced going to the league were no longer there. He's throwing parties for himself, drinking heavily, and watching guys like LeBron and Carmelo star in the NBA with nothing to show for the potential he had in high school. Sad story, man, because you just wish the guy had at least a head joke him Noah had. He seen him after a game and was like, yo, where the party at? Noah was like, nah, man, I'm trying to get my head right and my game together. After that, maybe we can party. A grown man still in his immature, unaware ways searching for that love at parties he once had. 
Hopefully, his story touches someone to keep your focus and never stop working. These girls, parties, jewelry, and nice things, they'll be there later. Solidify your position now before it's too late. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.